Welcome to session two, where we describe in some detail issues attendant to retailing in e-commerce. So in this session, what I hope you get from it include things like understanding and explaining what e-marketing or electronic marketing is about. Understand the advantages of electronic marketing. Understanding how to forecast a business to consumer electronic market and trying to understand what a business model of electronic marketing will look like. So let's start by trying to understand how e-marketing can be configured. But maybe I need to just explain electronic marketing means that we are conducting marketing over electronic interfaces. And marketing encompasses things like product management, sales management, things like promotional management, things like people management, things like fiscal evidence management. So the application of marketing to any of these functional areas of marketing can be characterized as electronic marketing. For the purposes of this session too, however, I'll focus largely on sales issues in my discussion of electronic marketing. Now, electronic marketing can be done in business to consumer context. So we, we refer to that as consumer-oriented electronic marketing. Now, that kind of e-marketing is mostly conducted online and is growing offline too, mainly because we are using smart cards, we are using mobile money and so on and so forth. Now, in B2B or business-oriented electronic marketing, the conduct of business is now between corporate entities. And in this mode of electronic marketing, we need more precise record keeping, more trackability, more accountability, usually with the high volume of transactions and large amount of payments that are made in B2B electronic marketing. Now, there are some clear benefits that accrue from the deployment of electronic marketing practices. The most obvious one is that you get to shop 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you get to enjoy customization, you get to enjoy online customer service, and you get to shop from a global marketing standpoint. Because I could sit in Africa and order a book from the US and it will be delivered to me. I order a book from China to be delivered to me. Or I can sit on at any corner of the globe, order from another far corner, and the product will still be delivered. So I guess the question to ask at this point is, what sells on the internet? What, what, what types of things can be sold in business to consumer electronic markets? Almost everything. I mean, you can sell items with high brand recognition. You can sell items with no brand name. <laughs> You can sell cheap items. You can sell expensive items. You can sell groceries. You can sell leather shoes. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's no telling that the spectrum of things that can be sold over the internet in business to consumer electronic markets. You can sell packaged items. You can sell unpackaged items. So, when we talk about business models of electronic marketing. We can discuss a couple of configurations. We can discuss global marketing versus regional marketing. So for instance, there are some products you can order in the UK and you get them delivered because you're in Europe, but on the same website, if you order that product, from Africa, nobody will deliver them to you. So that kind of market is available maybe only to North American and European consumers, but not to African consumers. So that's what we mean by global marketing versus regional marketing. Some electronic marketing schemes allow the conduct of global marketing in the sense that wherever you are, a product bought will be delivered to you. In other dispensation, it has to be regionalized, and therefore you need to be located in a certain region to be able to benefit from products 
that are being sold in that region. Then you can have what we call direct marketing manufacturers and indirect marketing manufacturers. So for instance, you can order a product from Samsung and somebody who works in Samsung in Ghana will deliver to you from Samsung. Or Samsung can work through what we call channel intermediaries. And a, a large retailer like maybe uh, a Digitronics or maybe a supermarket or some electronic marketplace will deliver you the product on behalf of Samsung. You can have what you call uh, generalized malls versus specialized malls. There are some online malls that sell an amazingly wide array of products, whereas there are some that focus, for instance, on leather footwear alone for gentlemen, for ladies, and for children. So a generalized mall sells a larger breadth of products and services, whereas a specialized mall deals with a certain narrow product line. So you can have a proactive versus reactive structure towards cyber marketing or electronic marketing. In a proactive structure, the company's main distribution channel is the internet. And internal management such as inventory and operations management is focused to affect the benefit of cyber marketing. Then you can also have what you call a reactive strategic posture towards cyber marketing where the traditional fiscal distribution channel is left as the company's main distribution channel, even though the company has opened an online distribution channel as well. So when we discuss active or full direct marketing, the Dell company is an amazing case in point. Dell's critical success factors lie in the following price competitiveness because of mass customization direct marketing, excellent reliability and a strong reputation, fantastic delivery support, excellent global reach and value added services at a single contact point, and most profoundly, a strong database marketing approach and, and, the, and, the, and the push, the incessant push for high customer intimacy. So this, these kind of characteristics make Dell one of the best examples of those who are engaged in active marketing from an e-marketing standpoint. In reactive or partial direct marketing, you sell your products through traditional channels like department stores, discount stores, and franchises. So if you take a company like Ford, they include they are dealers as partners. So including dealers as partners is optimal because orders that are received directly by the automakers may not be fiscally fulfilled without the cooperation of these dealers. And the received orders can then be assigned to the nearest dealer who owns the desired car in their inventory. And the dealer's inventory information should be shared by the automakers through a common network. When it comes to the delivery of online customer service, Hewlett Packard is a good case in point. By using computer telephone integration technology, the same screen that a customer sees can be automatically displayed to the human agent and vice versa, who responds to the customer's call watching the online data about the customer. When we talk about active electronic intermediaries, you can have what we call a pure electronic mall or a partial electronic mall. Now, for a pure electronic mall, the company's retailing business exists only on the internet. They have electronic distributors who take full responsibility of fulfilling orders and collecting payments. Then they have electronic brokers who assist the set process of finding the appropriate products and their vendors. Now, with a partial electronic mall, the electronic mall is only one of a plethora of existing distribution channels. Now, generalized electronic intermediaries include the iMall, for instance. They provide a directory, key search word engine. They provide message encryption. 
they provide a common platform of electronic payments. Now, it's important to note that some necessary antecedent factors are needed. If online shopping and by extension, e-marketing is going to be successful. Now, we, we customers need a reliable screening capability of quality and reliability of the brands and companies they want to purchase from. And sometimes e-brokers should create a trusted third party so that customers operate in some uh, uh, decent zone of comfort. Now, there should also be competing electronic channels, you see, because several electronic channels help in finding the item needed, and e-brokers should provide some sort of differentiated attraction. Now, some specialized electronic distributors also include cyber bookstores like Amazon Barnes and Noble and Waterstones in the UK and so on and so forth, and then some cyber CD stores like Music Boulevard, Columbia House, and then those who provide digitized products and services, games, CDs, videos, and those also provide cyber flower stores. So you can buy flyers off the internet. So, I mean, all said, electronic marketing is something that's here to stay. It's no longer a phenomenon that is peculiar to developed markets. It's happening here. You have a lot of companies like, uh, like Jumia.com. You have um, um, Conga.com. And in West Africa alone, there are all these companies that are pushing the electronic marketing agenda. So as a student of e-business and electronic marketing, I fully propose it because it gives a certain consumer con convenience which has the, the likelihood of helping you to increase sales so that you can strengthen your bottom line. So that's how we wrap up the session of electronic marketing. We'll continue again soon. Thank you. <music>